When did you start playing Stardew Valley? If it was fairly recently, then here's some stuff you might not know. Quality items. Back in super early versions of the game, items that currently cannot have quality stars actually could. So you know how items like crops, forageables, and even some artisan goods like cheese, wine, juice, and more can actually have little quality stars on them like silver, gold, and iridium quality? Well, for whatever reason, actually items back in earlier updates could have these too, like fire quartz, just basically any, any gemstone could have it for some reason, which was kind of weird. But it was removed, I don't really think it caused any harm, it just didn't fit the game and Concerned Ape didn't want it for some reason, maybe it was a bug, I'm honestly not sure. Emily and Shane not being spouses in the earliest version of the game. So in version 1.0 of the game, Shane Shane and Emily were not actually spouses that you could just romance and marry, etc. They were just regular NPCs. But Concerned Ape made a poll on Twitter. For the men, we had the option of Linus, Clint, the wizard, and Shane. Obviously Shane won since none of these other people are bachelors and Shane is one. I honestly would have had preferred if any other NPC had won besides Shane. I, I think everyone just would have been more interesting. Um, you could see Clint develop and like overcome his anxiety and move on past Emily. Linus could maybe move on from his past and we could get a second, maybe more humble house where he would feel comfortable living. And for the wizard, you know, come on, like let's just be honest, it would just be so cool. We could get like magic-y cutscenes it would, it would just be awesome. For the female spouse options, we had Emily, Marnie, Sandy, and Pam. <sighs> Stardew Valley community, you have failed us. Why did we not vote Pam? It would have been the ultimate meme. Truly tragic. Only one farm type. At the release of Stardew Valley, we didn't have a ton of choice on which farm map we wanted. Nowadays, we have the forest farm, the wilderness farm, the beach farm, the standard farm, the mountain farm, the four corners farm, and... <sighs> the other one we don't talk about. And we can even mod even more farms in the game if we get tired playing on the ones in the vanilla game that are provided to us. However, back in the day we only had one layout, and that was the standard layout. It was only in version 1.1 of the game that it added in multiple farm layouts. Each farm layout was meant to be based on a skill. The mountain farm was mining, the forest foraging, and etc. Chucklefish logo when you launch the game. Nowadays you probably remember that you can squash the concerned ape logo, just like you should squash the subscribe button. I'm shooting for 100k and I need your help. Anyways, like I was saying, if you aren't a psychopath, you squash Concerned Ape's face. Um, I, I, I know that's kind of, kind of backwards, but you know, it's just true if you play Stardew Valley, come on. But before that, we had a Chucklefish logo before said Concerned Ape intro. And if you don't know who or what Chucklefish is, it was the company that originally published Stardew Valley before Concerned Ape was very wealthy, had connections in the game industry, and they were actually very, very useful to him at the time when he first published Stardew Valley. They allowed him to publish, deal with copyright, and more things like that. And they only actually took 10% of his revenue, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually really, really good in the game development world. That's a lot lower than major publishers. Major publishers can actually take up to like 50, 60, like even a majority cut of the game's income. However, he broke ties with them after some accusations of Chucklefish using unpaid interns to work on Starbound, their own personal project at the studio. I completely agree with Concerned Ape's decision. I, I personally completely see the value of paying people for hard work they put in. If I commission anything, I of course pay for it. I just, I think it's really scummy that they didn't do that. I completely support Concerned Ape, like breaking ties with them and self-publishing. And yeah, well, so he obviously broke ties with them and now he self-publishes all Stardew Valley updates and plans to do it with his future games like Haunted Chocolate here and hopefully more. Bombs exploding when the game was paused. If only min-maxers had this ability today. I was watching an old DF video, as one does, and noticed that the bombs blew up while he was eating food, helping him reach even further down in the skull caverns. However, staircases actually didn't stack back then, so I think it's kind of all about trade-offs. A lot of items didn't stack. That brings us on to our next one, that a lot of items didn't stack like statues of perfection, staircases, and more. Also noticed this in an old DF video, thank you DF. No multiplayer. This isn't really an OG fact, but something that some people still might not know. Back in the early days of Stardew Valley, it actually had no multiplayer. Crazy to think about, I know, but it was just a lot different and it wasn't really Concerned Ape's priority. In fact, he actually admitted on Twitter that he outscaled it, not trying to make this sound like an accusation, just he publicly said it, he'd rather focus on content, nothing wrong with that, he still completely made the game himself. But anyways, yeah, multiplayer was not in the game. Crazy to think about, I know. How could you not have friends destroy your progress while trying to 
help. The character creator looking like this. This is the character creator from many years ago and now a lot of differences. Pretty cool seeing it evolve and how many more choices we have now. Red Cross. And hey, if you want to learn how Stardew Valley violated the Geneva Convention, check this video out on screen now since it's also a removed feature. I'll see you guys later.